Hi guys, put an error with the game of my tier 10 German battleship, the Kerr First. Now as you can see by the title, a cyclone is going to come in and it is going to affect this game in a big way. Now, my captain skills are extra catapult plane, uh, high alert, expert marksman, basics of survivability, basic fire training, advanced fire, fire training, and manual uh, secondary control. Upgrades are uh, protect my guns, longer secondaries, faster reload, DAMCOM 1, DAMCOM 2, and concealment. I just think concealment helps out a little bit more than the target acquisition, but you could take target uh, acquisition to complement this ship a, uh, a little bit more because when your hydro's down, you can spot the torpedoes, or if you're not running vigilance, you will get that little extra uh, spotting of the torpedo. Now as you can see we're on north, it's a clear day and like the title and I said earlier, a cyclone is going to come in. When it's a clear day, there's a 50-50 chance that there will be a cyclone. Now domination on north, I believe the Caps team should fight over are A and C. You get D by taking C, you get B by taking A. Because really, in essence, what you're doing is you're pushing the enemy away and then they can't come in behind, especially from A. Not a big fan of leaving A flank wide open. The other thing is, you can see there is a tier 9 aircraft carrier in play, which kind of changes up a little bit more. But you can still do an A and C strategy, it's just everybody has to get uh, grouped up. My initial plan here is to support C as much as possible. I started off by going three quarters because I knew I would be detected before anyone else. As soon as I was detected, uh, what I would do is wait until I saw an enemy ship, hit uh, the W key one more time to go full steam to have all those shells miss. Now I waited on my turn because I wanted to see where the shells were going in. They're gonna shoot me more than one. So shells come in on to the mine, so I figured I can make my turn. Now, I didn't see that it was the gearing at the time that got spotted, but what I did notice it was, oh, there's a DD, and now he's sitting in smoke. I don't want to turn in because that means I'm going to put myself a lot closer to these two battleships. Uh, it's also going to push me away from the Demonic's AA, which is what I don't want to do. So I take a quick look and see what is at A, make my turn to see if anyone is going to take shots in at me as I take a shot in at the Azuma. Take another quick look at A and see if I can get, uh, see if I can actually punish anybody because if I'm showing their, I'm showing my side to the guys in A, but I'm also seeing their side. Now the reason, the other reason I turned out is because. Uh, we did have planes overwards, and I wanted to play the uh, runaway game. I just want to get as much distance between myself and the torpedoes as possible. The reason I didn't hit a hydro or put up my plane because the friendly carrier had planes over smoke cloud. So I would have a lot more warning than if I potentially did something to spot these. But I still want to support C. As you can see, the guys that went to A quickly died. It looks like they did not have any battle support. Really looks like the uh, sole survivor of A is our friendly Karbaroff. There is a Frederick, I believe, over there. I haven't, wasn't paying attention to see how involved he was. But what these two guys are going to do is kite the enemy away and get them to follow them. Now, in a situation like that, you don't need to send everybody. One ship can go to keep those two pushing so the rest of the ships can swing to come deal with the second force and go cap B. By everybody running after these two, all it's gonna do is put all of those guys out of position to come and support uh, the rest of the guys here at sea. 
it's also going to make our lives a little bit easier because if they're chasing them, it usually means your guns aren't going to be looking at us. But due to dodging the torps and outrunning them, luckily, uh, it puts me behind everybody. I like to lead. I don't like to follow in my German battleships. I have Hydro. I have an extremely large health pool. I have a secondary build for a reason. But the one thing that this does kind of do is way, the way the carrier is sending his planes is I'm protected from any airstrike uh, attack. As they take shots and on a cruise off, it's really the only target I can shoot at. I might as well shoot at him. How about our friendly Des Moines to get him back into the action over here? It looks like our North Cal is also taking shots in on him. But I'm not 100% sure. But like I said, it's highly unlikely the carrier is going to come after me because he's going to have to fly by uh, two battleships, one being a uh, North Cal. And I, sorry, but I miss, uh, saw that it was the Hipper shooting at the Kutuzov, not the North Cal, as I accidentally run into the Hipper. But the sooner we can get rid of this guy, the sooner these two cruisers can come back down and support us. But the carrier, like I was trying to say, is not going to come after me as badly because he's got to fly by two carriers with the way he's sending his planes. If he would have sent them up through B, it would be a very easy target for him to potentially get out. Our Montana is extremely hurt. He's not going to survive uh, this salvo coming from Kutasov. Waiting for my guns to reload. This guy's showing me way too much time. As I believe the Hemper got a good hit on him, but somebody else got a nice solid hit on him as I finish him off. Now, as you can see, I've been, you know, uh, not doing too much. Uh, usually when I see there's a cyclone, uh, my goal focus is to trying to stay alive long enough. But... As you can see, we are finally getting a cap. We are down on points, we are behind on points, and uh, we are going to be behind on ships. See torpedoes, I see torpedo planes coming in. Now I see these torpedoes, which means it can only be the Japanese cruiser over here. I don't know if this guy's making a turn to do another drop. I'm not gonna take a chance. I'm gonna put my fighter up to try to help with these planes but as you can see this guy is going to get a nice drop in on the north cow i don't know why he picked the north cow instead of the yamato but you know what he gets a nice drop off he kills the north cow you know it was you know i would say at the time i might have done the same thing uh seeing that this cruiser might have gotten hits on Yamato, but with all of our AA, you saw none of the planes really survive. But he was able to successfully do the drop. Now this uh, Izuma, I'm pretty much going to ignore, because, well, he's so far back, he's not going to be bothersome, but at this point, I want to take the lead. I've got more health than Yamato, I don't even know if the Yamato's Damacom is out. The way that these planes are coming in, it looks like somebody did communicate that the Yamato's damage count is out. But I need to take the lead to get the pressure off the Yamato. Uh, he's going to burn for a while. I have Hydro. Uh, I have more of my health, but I, I just need to take the pressure off the Yamato getting uh, focused down here. As you can see, we finally managed to cap the sea, which I had no part of. I was unable to get in there. But if you look at the mini-map, the Hipper's making a right call. I don't know the Hipper's health situation, but we're down over 300 points. Ships, just about equal, but they do have a destroyer. We don't. The destroyer, uh, I believe, is the Kagero, and uh, this is his, what, dream. Uh, if, you know, full stealth build 5.4 detectability, even without, none of us are going to spot him 
before he spots us. His only nightmare is the Des Moines. But the hippers camping C, which is the right call, because like I said, we are losing. We need points. This is quickly turning into, uh, we need to get a lot of kills to make up the points and we need to stop the, the points bleed, which is why I'm pushing into B this way. I did notice that the last known position of the keg was into here. As soon as I get spotted, I'm gonna hit the hydro because I'm, I'm figuring this guy's gonna be close enough, just close enough, and he's barely within range from a hydro to pick him up. If he was running a full stealth build, I don't know, but we just deleted the uh, DD, which, you know, it helps us because it equals out the uh, points as far as ships. The only thing we're lacking on is we really haven't controlled any caps until, you know, the cycle. The Hindenburg's coming in. I know the Hindenburg now said the Hydro's running. Uh, got my secondaries going on him, but at this point, really what I want to do is just cut my speed, start reversing, and hopefully have the Yamato uh, come in and do to combined firepower deal with this guy. But it looks like this guy is going for uh, a torque on me. Looks like he's trying to get in as close as possible. I don't know if he knows the Yamato is there. Get a nice sell on this guy. This guy's burning. This guy's as good as that. But Yamato takes the shot. Now, I'm glad Yamato did because if he didn't, the time it would have taken my fire and my guns to reload, this guy would have dropped dwarfs on me. It would have been a lot more hurt. Now, I do believe the uh, we just lose our Yamato fire, but the enemy Yamato is showing me an awful lot of sight. I don't have time to deal with the clicking on planes, which I was trying to do, but with the storm, it's very difficult to see planes and do that right away. I'm more worried about staying angled against Yamato. Cannot Citadel me uh, because we are such close range, and for whatever reason, this guy's showing me his side. I already got one Citadel on him, and this guy just continues to slow down, aiming right underneath gun number one. There's two Citadels, devastating strike. Good night, Sally. You may have amazing bow armor only when you're facing me, giving me as your side, your bow don't mean crap. Now I'm turning my guns because I'm more worried about the Des Moines. The Des Moines at this range could potentially make very quick work of what, what health I have. He could get me down uh, relatively fast. As you can see, the Azuma gets uh, spotted. Click on him for my secondaries. But like I said, I'm more worried about Des Moines. I thought this guy would have kept creeping through there, which is why I got my guns there. Uh, at this point, I'm thinking, well, maybe the Des Moines is just hiding. There's no reason for me to stay on camp because I never would have camped it with uh, him shooting me. So at this point, I'm actually going to turn my guns uh, to deal with the uh, Izumo because I just, at this point, I didn't know what the Des Moines was as the Des Moines popped up to the side. Luckily, most or all of my guns were still looking this way. They didn't make the rotation all the way for Izuma. This guy's showing me side. Island needs a lot of my shells. I get a Citadel, and then I make a... Uh, I want to say I make a huge mistake here. I turned into these torpedoes, and the way that this guy was coming, and if this guy would have just kept coming in straight, he would have got off a really nice torpedo run. But I tr was trying to get as close as possible to the Des Moines, because I wanted his A to come in, but forgot to Des Moines, could not see the planes because it's only two kilometers uh, for planes to see you and you to see planes. I'm going to end up running aground. I ate an awful lot of damage when I necessarily didn't have to if I just could have potentially uh, turned 
out instead of turned in, gotten closer to the Des Moines to have him help me out. Gonna take a shot at the Azuma, and every single one of those hit this mountain, and none of them go through. But I am in a very sticky situation. For on the ground, I have to reverse, and these things don't get up and go uh, very quickly. Des Moines, I believe, is making the right call. He's leaving me to go cap. Hey, we need caps, we need points. Uh, the torpedo planes just came in, and it's going to be some time before they get in. But as you can see where he's at, he's still shooting at and hitting the Des Moines. It's just a matter of, can I rotate or turn my ship enough to get these rear guns into play, or uh, the Des Moines just uh, get enough shells and on target to finish this guy off? Luckily for us, we can see my gun's reloaded. Finish off the Azuma. Now, what I could keep doing was keep reversing, start turning the other way, go in and cap B. But the only ship left alive is the carrier. I'm extremely low health. This ship is not known for AA. I'm very badly damaged, which means I've probably lost uh, some AA. I want to get to the Des Moines as fast as humanly possible. I'm sure the gentleman was just joking about the hacks, which is why you see me do the, you know, yes, I used the boss hacks. Uh, if you were paying attention to the chat at the beginning of the game, game this was also played, uh, I believe, uh, the, uh, on this weekend, which was the German weekend. But luckily for me, the carrier is low on planes, which is giving me hopes that his uh, door planes are not going to have a lot left as, nope, there comes uh, one squadron of four and then another full one. So at this point, what I want to do to minimize my damage is focus down the squad that's got less planes. Probably going to eat torps. I'm turning into this island to try to make up the distance to where if this guy doesn't do a drop, it's going to be on uh, land. Lucky for me, I knock out the low plane uh, torpedo planes. I eat two torpedoes, hit the repair instantly because I know dive bombers are coming in, but at this point, uh, I'm sticking with I need to get to the Des Moines. Now, Normally, I would just say, at this point, you know, we're just going to go check out the post better results. But if you're paying attention to where the enemy uh, dive uh, tour planes are going, they're going directly uh, was it in, in, uh, south of my business. It's, they're going directly in front of me. It's pretty much going straight down the five line. And... This carrier is doing something extremely intelligent. He's letting us believe that his carrier is somewhere over there by bringing his planes over there. We know he's not going to be in the other corner because our carrier is pushing up on uh, up that way. So he's, you know, I'm even looking over in that area, uh, still a little bit thinking, well, maybe he's over there, but. He's not. He's over on the one line. I do believe the carrier just, you know, went scouting and found him. But that guy did a very good job doing that. And I just wanted to show you guys that, that well, most of the time, most carrier players do just bring them back to the carrier. Some do not. So you have to be wary of that at times. But now, guys, I'm not going to bore you with the... Uh, final moments of this game we are just going to go check out the post battle results 176,000 damage devastating strike fireproof dreadnought kraken unleash and with the five ships i did send to the bottom of the sea i'm number one on the team with a base experience of 2300 i just beat out the yamato who also sank four ships and got a base experience of 2300 made some money don't play it for money. Broken record. I have other ships for that. 
141,000 damage coming from main batteries off that AP. 33,000 damage coming from secondaries and only 1,000 from the fire. I really hope you guys enjoyed this replay. I really hope you did learn something. Um, we do appreciate all the support you guys do give us. Uh, uh, with Sneaky being gone, uh, it's been a little difficult for me trying to get back and comment on the comments. I'm not eloquent as Sneaky is. I just get straight to the point. So I'm just saying thank you guys for all of your comments and your support. Uh, remember, compliment good players, good teamwork. We are quick to report slow to compliment. Please hit that like and subscribe button and have yourselves one heck of a great day.